Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this worship service live streamed from the Christian Church of Wilkinsburg. Let's all read our mission statement together. We are interracial, intergenerational, into Jesus in the heart of Wilkinsburg, within the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented and broken world. Let's begin to center our hearts on the joy we feel as disciples of Christ by singing number two on our Red Chalice hymnal, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. with the joy and got your instruments and we're going to lift our hands in the sanctuary this morning and give him the praise. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give him the praise and we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise him for the rest of our day. We stop our feet in the sanctuary. We stop our feet to give him the glory. We stop our feet to give him the praise. And we will praise him for the rest of our day. Yes, we will praise him for the rest of our day. Jesus. We give you the praise, Emmanuel. We lift up your name. And Heavenly Father, come in Messiah. Oh, we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. We do our dance in the sanctuary. We do our dance to give him the glory. We do our dance to give him the praise, and we will praise him for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise him for the rest of our days. Say, Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, come in Messiah. Oh, we will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we 
us, we will praise you for the rest of our day. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the rest of our day. Yes, Lord. For the rest of our day. Yes, Lord. For the rest of our day. And we will praise you for the rest of our day. Amen. Let's pray. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we lift our eyes to you, as so many have done, way beyond the days of Elijah. You are the wisdom that has sustained us in our family, in this church, in the community. You are the healing that has sustained us in our families, in the church, in the community. Your power is like a rushing wind a fire that can't be burned out, a sea that rages and foams and then retreats. So we praise you, we adore you, we lift our eyes to you, and we return here again as vessels to receive all of the wisdom and healing and power that you would be so gracious to give us this day. Let us pray the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's wave the peace of Christ to each other, friends. We're not passing it quite yet, but we're waving the peace of Christ to our folks on the live stream and also Dr. Banks, Maya, Minister Sims is here leading us in worship today. John Klotzba is back in the house. We're waving at John. Good to see you. And Maya, you want to introduce your special guest? Oh, we're so glad to have you here today. So for our live stream congregation, Maya's parents and brother are here today from Serbia. So this is an international gathering today. You may be seated. As we look forward to the ministry of the congregation this week, we will have Bible study on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Our elders' prayer call will happen on Thursday at 7 p.m. And the last night of our summer session for our youth CT coming together, Coming Times Club will be this next Saturday. And so we are grateful for all of the ministry of the church. A reminder to you that Steve and I will be leaving on vacation on Friday. And we will return on Saturday, September 4. We're going to Vermont and to commune with the moose and the beaver and the mink and the uh, bear and whatever woodland creatures God sends our way as we're kayaking and hiking in that beautiful countryside. And so we ask for your prayers for rest and refreshment for us both. You will be well, well cared for. I always leave you in good hands. Minister Sims will be here throughout my absence and Ralph Greider if there are any concerns about the building and your uh, board chair, Jeff McLafferty. You're in good hands, very good hands. So as we come to our offering time, just a reminder that this is our opportunity to thank God. Thank God for the many blessings. Did you have a roof over your head today? Yeah. If you did, raise your hands. Yeah. Do you have clothes on your back? Yeah. Looks like everybody here does. Do you have food on the table? Yeah. All right. We have blessings, and this, um, the great hymn says we have 10,000 beside. If we could just name them all, there would still be 10,000 more blessings 
we haven't named. All we have needed, God's hand has provided. So I ask you to prepare your offering if you haven't done so already. Our live stream congregation can mail it to us or pay on PayPal. And there is an offering basket at our welcome table for those who are gathered here in the sanctuary in the Mills Fellowship Hall today. And so I ask that we prepare our hearts for the, the um, time of joys and concerns. Sorry, Steve's on his phone here. That's a reminder to me, if you would, um, silence your phones for us now. That really helps us this morning. So as we get ready to come before the throne of grace, let us prepare our hearts now. Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts. He is our joy, amen? He is the one, and no matter what's happening in our lives, he is the one who brings us joy. And so speaking of joys, let's share our joys and concerns with each other in this time of worship. Today is my grandson's second birthday. He had a grand party yesterday, more trucks than any one boy should ever have in his life. I'm assuming he slept with all of them, which is his habit to sleep with trucks. Um, and today is also the birthday of a very special person in the life of our congregation. Many of us gathered today do not know Gordon Connor personally. But I can assure you he's part of that great cloud of witnesses on earth, that extended church family that continue to support us. And so, uh, Janae, would you pass this um, clipboard around? This is a birthday card for Gordon Connor. He turns 90 today, 90 years young. If you would just put your name on it. These are folks who have supported us with their prayers, supported us. I think with monthly contributions and throughout our ministry, throughout my time here, they have been true saints of this ministry. Let me read to you a letter that will go out to Gordon this week. On Sunday, we will be offering special prayers for you and Barbara, Gordon, as you turn 90 years young in the Lord. This means that August 8 is the birthday of two of the most important people in my life, 
you and my grandson, Connor. I truly mean that you are one of the most important people in my life. You always have supported our ministry here at the Christian Church of Wilkinsburg, and you have supported me personally. Your heart for missions and for the gospel of Jesus Christ has inspired me and blessed our congregation. As I shared with Barbara on her 90th birthday, she turned 90 in June, you are both saints of encouragement, our congregation's very special Barnabas couple. May this new adventure of the 90s be filled with great joy, strong health, and energy for all God has placed on your hearts to do and to enjoy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, wisdom, and health for the living of these days. Blessings in our Lord Jesus Christ, Pastor Janet. Helner Burris and the saints of the Christian Church of Wilkinsburg. And so we celebrate with Gordon today, 90 years young in the Lord. On Thursday, we have another birthday person, Sharon Burris, Steve's mother, my beautiful mother-in-law, will be more years than she cares to share with us. And on Friday, August 13, Robin Lucas, who grew up in this church, will be celebrating her birthday. I want to extend gratitude to my husband, Steve, and to Jeff, and to all who made the Sherwood picnic a great success on Thursday. It was a lovely evening. I can tell you for sure that these young people in the front row went into the pool. I saw it with my own eyes saw them get into the pool. And let me tell you, Minister Sims looks pretty good in a swimming suit as well. So just want to say, you missed a lot if you weren't there with us. And we want to give thanks to our regional church for a grant of $750 to start our fall CT Youth Club. Let's give it up for the Christian Church of Pennsylvania. Now we need to find an assistant coach, so keep your ears out, your eyes out. We need to hire someone new because Stefan, who has been our coach through the summer, is going back to college in the fall. Speaking of going back to college, where is she? She, she just stepped out. Be sure to hug and kiss on Stephanie, whatever you are able to do at a social distance. She will be starting her college work at Slippery Rock University here soon. And I want to give thanks for this beautiful scarf I've laid on the com communion table from Serbia, from Maya's parents. Thank you so much. And I hope that those of you gathered in the sanctuary today, or I should say in the Mills Gymnasium, which is functioning as our holy ground sanctuary today, will come up and admire it after worship. This is always our time to pray for peace and healing around the world. We not only gather our own prayer concerns, but all of those news stories pull on our hearts. And we don't know quite what to do. What can I do about fires in California? What can I do about the people of Haiti in this time of great upheaval? You and I can pray. Because believe me, the saints need our prayers. So let's pray for peace on the streets here in Wilkinsburg. Let's pray for peace for the people of Afghanistan and Haiti in this time of uncertainty. And let us pray for an end to this pandemic worldwide and the devastation and disruption it has caused to all of our lives. So let us come before the throne of grace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can we say thank you in the house? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we endeavored this morning to do as your word says, to enter into these gates with thanksgiving and into your court with praise. We thank you for the joy that we feel, and our heart overflows this morning because you've been good to us. And you've blessed us above and beyond measure. Time would fail us to stand here today and to just
give you thanks for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. And for every promise that's in your word, because we know your word is faithful and true, and that every promise that you have spoken, you will see it fulfilled. And so we bless your name this day as we come before you with thanking you, O oh God. And we're not taking anything for granted. We're not taking for granted that we were able to have a clean glass of water this morning. We're not taking for granted that, Lord, you have allowed us to breathe your breath of life. And that's the only reason that we are moving about. Because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. And we say thank you, Father. Thank you for the new mercies that you give us each and every day. Thank you that we didn't have to dial 911 last night. Thank you that you didn't let the thief or robber break in upon us. Thank you that we didn't call, have to call up for the fire engines. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you and we honor you today. We thank you that we are able to gather here this morning and by live stream and to uni have unity in your name and in your word. Lord, we thank you for those that will be celebrating birthdays. Little Connor, we say happy birthday to you. And to all the August birthdays, Lord, we thank you that you have allowed them to see another year and have brought them through and kept them. And Lord God, we know that you will continue to keep them in your love and your mercy. Bless their going out and their coming in. Lord, we indeed thank you for that precious time of fellowship and that you put it on Mr. Steve's heart and that he envisioned us even being there before we were. Your people gathering together for a time of relaxation and just fellowship and how people came and enjoyed it. And it was not just a time of fellowship. From what I hear, it was a time of ministry, my friends that came, that I invited, she told me at their table they had ministry and they prayed for one another before they left there. And so we thank you, Father, for those types of gatherings. Lord, we thank you for the region that has blessed us to be able to keep these doors open for our young people, oh God, that they may be able to come in and be in a safe place. And Father, we asked that you would just let the money be like the fishing loaves. Bless it, O oh God, that it will be more than enough. And the more we give out, the more it will continue to seem to be. O oh God, because we know that you can do it. We thank you for that assistant coach that we need that's coming into place even now because we call it to be so. We know that you've not blessed us with the resources and then allow there to be a lack. So, Lord, we thank you. Send that assistant coach our way. Let us make the connections that we need, that we'll be prepared and ready to move forward at the appointed time. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing already and for what you're orchestrating and putting in place to keep our streets safe and for us to do our part. Lord God, let us have a listening ear for the move of your spirit and Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Afghanistan and Haiti, that you're working it out because you are a prayer answering God. And we have lifted it up before you. And Lord God, we trust that you will do, Lord God, what only you can do. In this COVID, Lord, we put it in your hands because it is far beyond our capabilities. But Lord, once again, just put in our hearts and our minds as we follow the lead of your spirit to do all that we can do and trust and know that you will do what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you for your word. And we know that we will be enriched and the better for having heard your word this morning as it comes forth through your servant. Lord, I pray that you will... Allow your anointing to be upon her even now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord God, that you will strengthen her and use her for your glory and to bless your people. 
And Lord God, we just continue to give you praise because you said you inhabit the praises of your people. And so, Lord, as we in, in endeavor and desire for you to be near to us and Lord, we can feel your presence. We know the way to it is to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray this day. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the word. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house, and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Let us pray. Let your word go forth now, Lord Jesus, with authority and with power power to raise, the power to deliver, the power to heal, the power to guide. Lord, in your mercy, you are the word incarnate. Let your word become incarnate in us now as we hear, receive, and become obedient to the word that gives life. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. But keep your Bibles open. I'm wondering what your favorite praise song is. 
Maybe it's the one we sang this morning. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Maybe it's a camp song from Laurel View. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Or maybe it's one of the gospel songs Minister Sims has taught us over the years. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, you better get thee behind, victory today is mine. There are all kinds of praise songs out there. And today we're learning about a praise song that was powerful enough to send an earthquake, open the doors of a prison, and bring in light at midnight at Paul and Silas' darkest moment. Paul and Silas, as Dr. Banks read for us, doesn't he read scripture well? I mean, oh my goodness, you make it come to life. So nobody falls asleep when Dr. Banks reads scripture, which is as it should be. And so Paul and Silas are on their missionary journey. They're deep in Gentile territory. You might think of it as hostile territory. There's not even a synagogue in Philippi. The Jews that are there are gathered at the river along with Gentiles who were considered God-fearers, who had, were praying along with the Jewish people. And so they were able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in that way. And while they were wandering around the city, meeting people and sharing with them the love of Jesus, this slave girl kept following them. And she had some kind of demon possession that caused her to shout and scream and such a spectacle that actually her owners, her masters, were able to collect money because she was quite, quite a show. Well, Paul's had enough of her, casts out the demon, those guys are really upset. That was their meal ticket, this slave girl. And so they trump up charges, tell the Romans, these guys are disrupting our community. And look at what happens to them. They are attacked by an angry mob. They are stripped of their clothes. They are beaten with rods. They are flogged, not just a nice flogging, but a severe flogging, the scripture tells us. They are thrown into prison in the innermost cell. So that means the cell with no light, no air, the stench of human decay and excrement there. It smells, it's dark, it's dingy, it's unsanitary, and their feet were fastened in stocks, meaning that their legs were pulled apart to the farthest extreme and then they tied their feet down there because it was meant to be a form of torture. Indeed it was. And so we read here about what Paul and Silas do. They have every reason to be angry about what's happened to them. They didn't do anything wrong. They healed someone for heaven's sakes. They have every reason to be afraid because this mob nearly tore them to bits before all the rest of the punishment came down on them. They have a right to be sad, a right to be in despair, a right to be down. But look at what they do. Verse 25, let's read it together. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. At their darkest hour, they're singing praises to God. Because they know the power of praise. The power of praise to send an earthquake of change, to open the doors of people's hearts, and to disperse the night of darkness and despair. The scriptures say so much about this discipline, this practice of praise. Look with me at the Psalms. And if you're not sure where to find the Psalms, this is how I teach our young people. 
divide your Bible in half, and you're almost always in the book of Psalms. Let's start with Psalm 46. Psalm 46, the first two verses we're going to read together. You'll find it in the Old Testament, page 715, Psalm 146, first two verses. Let's read together. Praise the Lord. I'm not hearing you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Now go to Psalm 147, verse 1. Let's read again. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. Psalm 148, in case you're not convinced, let's read the first verse. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. And then it goes forth and asks for all creation to praise God. And then Psalm 149, verse 1, let's read together. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the people. Are you convinced yet? Let's go on to Psalm 150. Let's pick up with verse 3. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and heart. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We could be here from now till next Sunday reading all the scripture verses about praising God, about the need to praise the Lord. It is a survival technique for believers in God. We can't live without praise. So often we talk in this church about the practices and disciplines that keep us strong in the faith, that keep the joy of the Lord and his peace in our hearts. We talk about things like daily prayer and weekly worship and fasting and silence and retreats. Well, praise is a spiritual practice, and we don't just do it when we feel like it. We do it at midnight in our darkest moment. That's when we need to praise the Lord the most. Try it sometime. I did it this last week. I'm a little bit tired right now. Just saying, just a little bit tired. And that when the body is tired, it pulls the emotions down, the brain's not thinking as well, our spirit kind of gets low. And I was realizing what was happening to me and I thought I'm gonna practice praise right now. And so often you can begin your praise practice with thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And so started to count out my blessings and name them one by one. I was start my spirit starting to lift. And then I chose my favorite praise song and I started to sing that. I was out in the grocery store at the time, so I wasn't singing out loud, I have to be honest, but it was going on in my head. And then I ended it with, I thank you, Lord, I praise you, Lord, I magnify your holy name. And I'm telling you, that dark spirit just had to go. And I was filled again with the peace and the strength and the love of Jesus because of the spiritual practice of praise, especially at midnight especially when we don't feel like it, especially when times are tough. When we praise God, earthquakes happen, doors pop open, and the night is dispelled by the light of Jesus. As we talked about this in our Wednesday night Bible study, we talked about what praise does for us. It helps to lift and raise our spirits. And I'm not talking about denying our feelings. God has given us anger and sadness and sorrow and fear for good reason. We are to feel, but we can't stay stuck in our feelings. I love what Richard Rohr says. He says, we can have a feeling without a feeling having us, possessing us and keeping us down. And so I'm not saying that you shouldn't be angry or you shouldn't fear that you should always be happy. Don't confuse happiness with praising the Lord. 
Start when you're not happy, and it will lift and raise you up. All, many of the Psalms begin with words of anger. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Some of them begin with sadness and sorrow. But at the end of the Psalm, always, always there are lines of praise as the heart is lifted up and raised up. I remember experiencing the power of praise at the Haitian American Church in Philadelphia. We were on a mission trip, right, Don? And it was about 102 degrees, right, Don? No air conditioning, right, Don? We were in an enormous warehouse with more cockroaches than I ever want to see again in my life. And we were painting and getting this building prepared for our beautiful Haitian American congregation. And so we were exhausted with a full weekend of painting in this very, very, very hot building. But on Sunday, we decided that we needed to worship with our new friends. And so we walked in, and I was told as we walked in, the first hour of worship, it is three to four hours long, the first hour of worship is praise. And I'm like, oh, good. OK, all right, I don't have the energy. I hardly know if I'm going to be able to drive home to Pittsburgh today, but OK. And so I sat and watched them praise God. And then I started to move my body back and forth to the music. And I started to clap. Oh, yeah, I got enough energy to clap here. And then I started to stand up. OK, that's OK. I'm looking at the young people like you guys in the front row. They always put the young people in the front row. They're dancing. And so I went up and I said, teach me how to do that. And I'm dancing and I'm thinking, I'm exhausted, but I'm dancing and I'm praising God. And it just lifted my spirit and I had the energy to get back to Pittsburgh that day. There is power in praising the Lord, friends. Power to lift and raise us up. It's also, excuse me, our praise is also a witness and a testimony to others. People are watching us. They want to see, how is he going to do now that this person has died? What is she going to do now that she's got that terrible diagnosis? They're looking at us. They're watching us. And if we can turn around and talk about how thankful we are and praise God in the midst of our own personal midnight, it's a powerful witness, a powerful testimony, as it was in the scripture story we just read. The other inmates were listening to Paul and Silas singing praises to God, and the jailer was listening. And yes, of course, the earthquake definitely got his attention, but it was also the fact that Paul and Silas were praising God with blood streaming down their back, infections probably starting in that unhealthy environment. They were beaten almost to a pulp, and they're singing praises to God. It made an impact on that jailer. He wants to have what they have. And so after the doors of the jail pop open, he takes them into his very home, and he binds up their wounds, and he feeds them, and then he gives his life to Christ. He and his household are baptized. When we can thank and praise God at our personal midnight, it's a powerful witness and testimony. It's also, as Elder Carol Calloway reminded us on Wednesday evening, praise is a form of protest and defiance to the forces of evil the forces of darkness. You can do whatever you're going to do, but I'm going to praise God. I'm going to thank God. I don't care what you do to me. You have no ultimate power over my spirit and my soul. As Jesus said, we can't just, we shouldn't fear people who just can harm our bodies. We fear the one who can take our souls as well. We don't want the dark nights of our souls to steal our joy, to steal our peace. And that's what praise does. It puts a hedge of protection around our hearts when we're going through those midnight hours. And we saw the power of praise in the civil rights movement. What did those 
brave, nonviolent folks do, men, women, elderly, and children. They went out on the streets, and as they faced the dogs, as they faced the fire hoses, as they faced verbal abuse, they were singing, friends. They were singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. They were singing, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. They were singing praises to God. It was an act of protest and defiance to the forces of darkness and violence and hate. But most of all, praise, this practice of praise, is an act of surrender and trust. I'm praising you, God, in the midnight of my life because I know, I can't see it right now, but I know you're going to use even this for your will, even this for your purposes. For we know, as Romans says, that in everything God works for good with those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. So praise is an act of trust. I trust you. I don't feel it right now. I don't see it right now. I don't hear it right now. But I know you're at work in this situation. So I'm going to praise you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to trust you in the midst of my own personal midnight. Praise is essential, friends. I know some of us of my skin color who grew up in traditional middle-class congregations think that praise is for other people, people who can stand up and clap and dance. There are all kinds of praise, all kinds of praise. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We stomped our feet. We did our dance. We clapped. For some of us, that is how we get our soul into praise. For others of us, it may be a different kind of music. I don't care. Sing country, sing rap, sing screamo, for heaven's sakes. But find your song of praise and lift it up to the Lord. As we said on Wednesday at our Bible study, praise is necessary, it's vital, it's critical. For the Christian, it is sweet communion with God. It brings us into the presence of God. As Minister Sims just said earlier, God inhabits our praise. Let that sink into you. When we praise, God is living in that praise, which means all the goodness that God wants to give to you is being released in the act of praise. I love what Frank Hightower said. He said, praise is at oneness with God. It's not optional, friends. It is a practice. We need to learn how to do it daily. And I'm delighted as Minister Sims and I reflected on where we need to go in the fall quarter, especially not knowing what's going to happen with this pandemic. She's calling us to Friday evening's prayer and praise it's once a month or once every two months where we will gather and really praise and pray together. Because when we praise, earthquakes happen. When we praise God, the doors of our prisons open. When we praise God, the night disappears and the light of God shines forth. Let us praise the Lord. Is worthy. Amen. Is he not? Is he worthy of our praise? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But God is a good God. And I just want to say that, like my mom used to say, and if you haven't had a midnight hour, and we're not just talking about the time clock going to midnight. But as pastors explained it to her, if you haven't had one, she said, just keep on living. Because it's not about if, it's when. And I just want to give witness that that midnight hour when it comes, it'll be a whole lot more easier to bear with Jesus on your side. 
And so I just say, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins and you haven't prepared yourself for that midnight hour, that's one of the first steps you want to take is to come to know him as your Lord and Savior. Because if you want Jesus to show up and show out, and he will do it in your midnight hour, <laughs> then surrender and give him that praise. Amen. So we pray as we give you invitation to come to the Lord's table and to sup with him that you would yield totally, surrender it all. Nobody can do you like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Nowhere. And so we remind you that this is the Lord's table. And he gives us welcome to come and dine with him. The table has been prepared for us with the bread of life and the cup of forgiveness. And the Lord invites you to be a partaker. And I just want to pray for the elements and that in our hymnal number 774, there's a prayer that you can pray along with me as we bless this table. And we remind you that you need not be a member of this church in particular or this denomination, but that you are welcome at the Lord's table. It says, with grateful hearts, O oh God, we come to Christ's table, remembering that you spoke creation into existence and pronounced it good. Remembering that you called servants to make your work known and declared your reign. Remembering that you effected salvation through Jesus Christ and reconciled us to you. Be known to us now through the gift of your spirit in the breaking of bread and the drinking of cup. Renew your image within us. Restore our trust in your love. Refresh our spirits for caring service. Join us with all your people everywhere in joyous praise for you ever lasting love. Amen. And I know it was the blood. Yes, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I'm so glad it was the blood. I'm so glad it was the blood. So glad it was the blood for me. Cause one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I'm so glad it was the blood for me. And I thank God it was the blood. I thank God it was the blood. I thank God it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I thank God it was the blood for me. Yes, we thank God it was the blood that was shed for each 
in every one of us. And so let us remember and call to mind that on the night that our Lord and Savior was betrayed, that he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in like manner, after he had supped, he took the cup, he blessed it, he said, this is my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. This do in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you show forth my death until I come. So take of the bread and eat ye all of it. Take the cup of forgiveness and receive it unto yourself. And drink ye all. As often as we eat from the bread of life and drink from the cup of forgiveness, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. And until that time, we're going to learn how to praise him in total praise. Listen to the words of this song. You are the source of my strength. Do you believe that today? You are the strength of my life, and that's why I lift my hands in total praise to you. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm in the car, I'm listening to praise music. I always keep two hands on the steering wheel, young people. But at a traffic light, you might see my hand going up like this. That's right, Lord, that's right. I praise you, thank you, and magnify your holy name. And so we got the band back here, the choir is back here to sing total praise for you, all of us vaccinated up front at this moment, this beautiful gospel song. from 
Strength. You are the strength of my life. 